Aaron and I were just watching the uh, 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 Roger Ebert documentary. It's on. Is it's it on tough iTunes to watch? Because right I think that guy's amazing. It's really hard to watch because he's a great guy, and and therefore you should watch it. It, it, it I, that, no, it's not hard. It's it's inspiring because it's, it's something terrible is happening to a person that doesn't deserve it, and. Uh, coping with that and watching him fucking just charge headlong into the oblivion with, with a with a with a you know I was gonna say with a smile on his face and then I was gonna then I ran through all these fucking <laughs> yeah I'm sorry that's how my brain works and what happened and did, thank you for proving that I was right to uh, have vapor lock for a second um, the uh, but it's 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 a good documentary that will yeah it's a nice uh, it's watch it um, <laughs> the uh, the relationship between Siskel and Ebert there's a there's a story that uh, Siskel's wife tells uh, I think those guys really like, I thought you know when I was a kid growing up watching these guys I was like well they hate each other that's what's for sale but it's kind of an act it's like Ernie and Bert like which which is true but they also really did hate each other they really they did really hated each other but they also loved each other and it's really Really, it's that, that that part of the documentary is also very touching, but it's uh, more, way more so. But the, like the, the more important part of the documentary is Ebert's relationship with his wife, and uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a uh, tear bringer. I think it might Not be a jerker. Much tears brought <laughs> by this tear bringer. Um, there's a story in it. Siskel's wife tells. How many tears have you brought? <laughs> Give it the airplane theme of the story. So Siskel's Siskel and Ebert are on an airplane flying somewhere, and Siskel is tired of listening to Ebert. This sounds like a good joke. Talk, uh, talk. Of, uh, like so he's like, gonna fuck it up. Uh, <laughs> Ebert, Ebert's, Ebert's telling the same story. Siskel doesn't want to hear it anymore. So Siskel gets a napkin and writes a note on it that says, uh, Mr. Ebert, we're here in the cockpit. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we found out you're on the plane. We, we admire you much more than, uh, that other guy. We really agree with your movie reviews more than his. And it would be an honor if you would join us in the cockpit. <laughs> And just talk about movies with us for a while. <laughs> so I had, gave the note, had the flight attendant hand Ebert the note. Ebert goes bounding down the aisle, like, starts pounding on the cockpit door. <laughs> It's a funny story. And then, and, then, and then everyone's like, what the fuck is this fat guy doing? And then, he's trying to destroy the plane. And then uh, Siskel calls out from, from his seat. Uh, that he, just, he just yells out, like, uh, Mr. Ebert, we in the cockpit. Well, he, he yells out the first line of the letter. <laughs> That's how the story ends. I, uh, I, there's an airplane the, theme. There's a great article that Ebert wrote because he lost his lower jaw. To, and so he couldn't eat, so he was on tubes and stuff. He wrote this wonderful article about... How how he experiences food now, how he looks at pictures of food and recalls like wonderful meals he ha he's had and, and he's like, don't feel sorry for me, I'm still having that experience and he talks about like his best meals as a guy who will never taste again. It's really, really a fantastic, like it, it's a real tear bringer. It's his, really great. His, <laughs> the, it really is a great article. The, the end of his life is one of the most inspiring chapters of it because he very quickly ad uh, uh, adopted the, the, the blogging lifestyle because he he had no, and he just, he he became like 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 right up to the finish line. He was like one of the coolest bloggers and tweeters, and uh, kind of amazing that you can not only can you not fear death, but you can actually like get some of your better shit done right before it, even when you're staring it in the face. Um, kind of cool, but also really fucked up because why Harold Ramis? Why Roger Ebert? Why why do bad things happen to people that we admire? And the answer so many is, thoroughbreds when there's so many we could spare down here. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.